Hey YouTube, it's bboy 313 a brand new flight to call me that, and today I'm going to be showcasing you guys my Shadal Invoke deck profile post 2020 September ban list. Now I know this deck hasn't really done a whole lot ever since new cards came around like An Emancipator and El Lich. I know it's not as powerful as it once was, but I still like the way that the deck functions. I mean, you can, you can basically fusion summon a lot, and you can use your opponent's graveyard as your, as your like, extra deck tools to summon even stronger monsters. Anyways, without further ado, let's get straight into the deck profile. Starting off with the main deck, we are playing, of course, triple copies of my son, Alistair the Invoker. This card is so good, and it's absurd. When you normal summon this card, you can search your deck for Invocation. Now, we actually play three copies of Invocation, but we're going through with the monsters first. You can target any fusion monster, and... That fusion monster gains a thousand attack and it's a quick effect meaning that you can actually activate it during the battle phase and during your opponent's turn. Shadal monsters, we are playing triple copies of Re Shadal Windy. If she sends out a graveyard by card effect, you can special summon any Shadal monster from the deck. One copy of Little Mermaid aka Nail Shadal Ariel. If she sends out a graveyard by card effect, you can banish up to three cards of either player's graveyard so basically it doesn't have to be just your graveyard but you can also use this card to banish your opponent's l lich also she has a flip effect where you could target a shadow monster from the banish zone and special summon it in either face up or face down defense position. Next, we are playing two copies of Squamata, Shadal Squamata. If it's sends little graveyard by card effect, yada yada yada, you can send any Shadal card from the deck to the graveyard. You can even send um, the Shadal monsters and activate their effects as well. And it also has a flip effect where you can target one monster in the on the field and pop. Right here is my personal favorite Shadal monster, which is Shadal Beast. Now, what I really like about Shadal Beast is that Shadal Beast is one of the monsters that allows you to uh, draw cards. If it's flip summoned, you can draw two and pitch one from your hand. And if it's sent to the graveyard, by a card effect, you get to draw one card, Shadal Hedgehog. Now, I play two copies of this card. If it's sent to the graveyard by card effect, you can add any Shadal monster. And if it's flipped face up, you can add a Shadal spell or trap card from your from the deck to the hand. The one Shadal Dragon. Uh, the reasoning why we're playing one is because we don't really utilize this card a lot. Um, you could play two if you want. It doesn't really matter. Same goes for Skomata and um, Hedgehog, you could play up to three, but in this specific variation, I play two copies instead of three. If it's flip summoned, you can target a monster and then bounce it back to your opponent's hand. And if it's sent to the graveyard by card effect, you can pop any um, spell or trap that your opponent has. And lastly, for the Shadal monsters, I am, I am playing the one copy of Shadal Falco. If it's sent to the graveyard by card effect, you could special summon it face down from the graveyard. And it's good because you could go into some extra fusion plays. It has a flip effect where you could target any Shadal monster in the graveyard and special summon it face down, which does come in handy sometimes. That's all of the Shadal monsters. Now we do play some hand traps in this deck. So we are of course playing triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. Now. Ash Blossom is, is, just an, is just an awesome way to prevent your opponent from going into extra comboing. We are playing three copies of Cyframe Gear Gamma. Now, the reasoning why I am playing three copies of Cyframe Gear Gamma is because it's another good hand trap to stop your opponent from comboing a lot. If your opponent activates a monster effect, you can special summon this from your hand, special summon a Cyframe Driver from your deck, and negate and destroy that monster effect. And it doesn't have to be from the deck. It can also be from your hand or graveyard. The next card we're playing is double copies of Effect Veiler. 
Now, Effect Veiler is another a good utility hand trap. Um, what she does is that you can basically activate this during your opponent's main phase, target their monster, and then just negate their effect. And last, for the hand traps and monsters, we are playing double Nibiru the Primal Being in the main deck. We really want to break our opponent's boards simply just by throwing down a Meteor at their board. So that is pretty much it for all of the monsters. Now it's time to move on to the spells. We are playing triple Shadal Fusion. Shadal Fusion is one of the best cards in this deck. You could fusion summon any Shadal monster from your deck. If you go second and have this card, while they have a fusion monster, a link monster, or any monster that is special summoned from the extra deck, this card is a one card OTK. And triple copies of El Shadal Fusion. Now, El Shadal Fusion, it's, it's basically quick play spells, so you can actually activate this during your opponent's turn. And if you have like at least two dark monsters on the field, you can easily go into El Shadal Winda with this card. And three invocation the best fusion spell card in this deck why because this is the card that allows you to um use your opponent's graveyard to fusion summon any invoke monster from your extra deck as long as you use alistair from your hand or graveyard you can actually recycle this card by shuffling it back into the graveyard and target alistair and put him back straight into your hand. This deck is somewhat budget, but I managed to actually pull some of these invocations. Also, I managed to get some of these from trades. But yeah, if you guys if you guys don't have um, invocation or any Alistair's or any invoke engine, that is absolute. That is fine. You could just play the pure variant of um, Shadows. There's really nothing wrong with that. Next up, we are playing double Super Polymerization. This card is so annoying to play with. You discard one random card from your hand, then Fusion Summon one f Fusion Monster from your extra deck using monsters from either player's field as Fusion Materials. And the best part about this card is that your opponent cannot respond with any cards, meaning that if they activate Solemn Judgment, they can't activate that because it's Silver Poly. They can't they can't do anything once you activate this card. Last for the fusion spells, we are playing the one copy of Instant Fusion. Now, we are playing some level five or lower fusion monsters. We are not playing Thousand Eyes Restrict or Millennium Eyes Restrict with this deck. I've tried it and people always have an out for those cards. Anyways, you just pay a thousand life points and fusion summon any level 5 or lower um, fusion monster from the extra deck. Triple copies of Magical Meltdown, if I can get this third copy up here. Um, what this card does is it's basically your searcher for Alistair the Invoker. And then after that you can normal summon it, search invocation, yada yada yada, and then you fusion summon. And what this card does is that if you fusion summon a monster, your opponent cannot respond with anything. And they cannot be negated. One copy of Foolish Burial. Because you can literally send any fusion... Not fusion. Um, Shadal monster. And then you can activate their effects. And then we play the one copy of Terraforming. As our fourth copy of Magical Meltdown. This searches for Field Spell. And Magical Meltdown is a, indeed a Field Spell. And that's pretty much it all for these spells. Now I'm... Time for the trap cards. One copy of Reshidal Incarnation. Uh, this card is like a monster reborn, but as a trap card, but for your Shadal monsters. And when you banish it from your graveyard, you can banish another Shadal monster from your graveyard to target any monster that's face up or face down. And then you can do vice versa. One copy of Paleozoic Dalumiscus. Now we are playing this card because um, you could target a monster on the field and then discard it as a card effect and then banish that card. Now, since the discarding is an effect and not a cost, this is also a good tech option for using a Shadal monster. 
so that way you can activate their effects. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the main deck. Now it is time to go for the extra deck. Now it is time for the extra deck. We are playing indeed um, double copies of El Shadal Construct. Now, El Shadal Construct, this card used to be banned and now we can actually play three copies of this card. Now, what this card does is that when it's fusion summoned, you can send a Shadal monster from the graveyard. And when it's sent to the graveyard, you can add one Shadal spell or trap card from the graveyard to your hand. And what's crazy about that is, is that that effect is not once per turn, by the way. So literally, you can use, use this effect as many times as you want, as long as you have the proper board in order to actually use the effects properly. Double copies of El Shadal Winda. She cannot be destroyed by card effects at all. And also your opponent and yourself can only special summon one monster during each player's turn. Oh my gosh, isn't that crazy? I mean, letting your opponent special summon only once, it's kind of, kind of a troll move right there. The last and final Shadal fusion monster that we are playing in the deck is El Shadal Apcalone. This is the one of the one of the newer um, Shadal fusion monsters that came out this year. Um, it just requires two Shadal monsters with different attributes. It can be destroyed by card effects. When it's fusion summoned or special summoned, you can target any card on the field and just negate the effect. Also, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one should all monster one should all card, my mistake, from the deck or graveyard. And then after that you can pitch one card from your hand. And that pitch is also a card effect which can also activate your Shadal effects. We are doing our invoke monsters so we are playing the one copy of invoked Kaliga. Um, this is just to slow our opponent down, and if you have this along with um, Wind Winda, that's really it's gonna be a really slow game because this one you can only activate one monster effect and you can only attack with one monster. Um, Invoked Elysium. This is just for situational plays, like if I have an invoke monster and I'm dealing with a dragoon. I can just um, super poly that and then go into um, Elysium. And then after that, um, it has a effect where it becomes every single attribute except for Divine. And you can banish this card and banish all your opponent's monsters that they control because this counts as every single attribute in the game except divine one copy of Makaba just for our negations one copy of um invoked purgatrio my personal favorite invoke monster because this card gains it gains 200 attack for each card your opponent controls um and it can attack as many monsters your opponent controls and when you're if you attack your opponent's monster in defense position um, this does piercing damage. Last and final Invoked monster we are playing in the deck is Invoked Raijin. Now, he has an effect where it can target any face of monster on the field and place a face down. It's kind of like Book of Moon, so utilize this card as much as you want. Also, if you use, in if you use Instant Fusion and summon him, because he's a level 5, and you use his own effect to put himself face down, he won't be destroyed. The one copy of Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Uh, we are dealing with um, Dragoon, so we must utilize this card as much as possible. And if they end up with a Savage and a Dragoon, you can use Super Poly on both to summon this guy. Link Monsters, we play Almirage just for, um, for extra Link plays. If we summon Alistair, we can go into him. And then we could also go into this one, Secure Gardener, because it's a light monster. Um, next up we have Cross Sheep, because its fusion effect is amazing. When a fusion monster is summoned to an arrow that it points to, 
you can special summon a level 4 or lower monster from the graveyard. Last and final link monster we are playing in the deck is my dog, Bull Sword Dragon. Bull Sword Dragon is just so good for OTKs. You could, I mean, you could also substitute this card for Avermax or Access Code Talker. Literally, any any level four is is fine for the deck. But for this specific deck, it's we're only using Bull Sword, and that's pretty much it for the deck profile for the Invoke Should All deck. I mean, you could also use other cards to make this card to make this deck better. Um, you could use Mech Knights in this deck. You could also use the Perform Mage cards. But in this specific variant, we are using a lot, a lot of hand traps because Call by the Grave is at one and we are, use, we are utilizing as much hand traps as possible so that way our opponent cannot stop us. And again, if you guys want to see more deck profiles like this, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. And also leave a comment on to what deck you want me to do next. And also, you guys want me to do um, my Dragon Link deck profile or you guys want me to do um, uh, Dark Magician. And also, leave a comment about your opinion on this um, deck profile of the Shadal Alistair 2020 Banless September deck profile. Peace. B-Boy out.